Welcome back to Vampire. I'm heading to Whitechapel, actually I'm already in Whitechapel, looking for uh, that person that might be able to read the braille thing that I found a while ago. But before that, since I was visiting here, I figured I should embrace some people now that I'm high enough level to do it. And the district is healthy, so it shouldn't hurt things too much. This is, I forgot their name, some, Jordan Peterson or something Peterson? The asshole bed boot boy person. Let's embrace them. Take care of him. Was I a good father? No, no, you weren't. Oh, new hint. Does that mean maybe I can tell them to like go somewhere and maybe someone else can take care of them? I don't know. They're looking out the window up there. I wonder if they watched me do it. <laughs> Are they going to instantly teleport down to the door? Good evening, Harry. Weird. May I come in? Sure. Do you remember when Barrett Lewis was close to your family? To your mother? Not really. I was too young. But I remember it was a happier time. Mr. Lewis was funny. He often had dinner with us. How was he towards you? He was nice, I guess. He never forgot my birthday. He always offered me books. I liked books. Why are you sad, then? Because it hurts to remember a time when my father used to laugh and smile. It hurts to realize he's as sad as me now. You and your father have a difficult relationship, Harry. Tell me, did he ever hurt you? No, never. My father can be brutal and rude, violent even. But he never touched an air on my head. What is going on between you two, then? It's his job if you can call it a job. He bullies people. Men and women we know, like poor Mr. Lewis, it's just not right. Is that it then? God, I wish there were more options. Like, now that they don't have a father, I really wish I could tell them something like, hey, go, maybe this person will take you in. And they're not an asshole like your father was. But I can't do anything. Just gotta... Leave him here. Sorry, Harry. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. Joe's Barbed Cudgel. Let's see how that thing is. Two-handed? Yep. Level 3 does 190 damage. Let's see. What would it... Well, let's look at the stats first. Looks like I could compare it to the mace. Yeah, same attack speed, same stamina. Same level, actually. It does very slightly less damage. It does a bit less stun. Oh, that's the difference. So this mace, its ability is stun, but Joe's Barbed Cudgel ability is parry. A large wooden stick reinforced with barbed wire, probably used by Joe the Colossus Peterson when extorting merchants or mugging passers-by. I think I'd pre prefer the parry ability over stun. Maybe. I'm not sure. I haven't parried in forever. But let's see how it scales. So if it was level 5, it would do 400 damage. If this thing was level 5, it would do 411 damage. Okay, so it's comparable damage with everything else. Do you know Braille, Mr. Swanborough? I'm no expert, but I learned it in my spare time, yes. Why? I found a strange document entitled Cure for Blindness. It's written in Braille, so I thought perhaps it was yours. Really? Is that some kind of sick joke? Let me see. Here it is. This letter seems authentic. And it actually refers to an experimental cure for blindness. You have piqued my interest, Dr. Reed. Could it be of any use to you? No. This page is just a part of a larger diary. I'd be glad if you could find the other pages. So there's a quest line where you cure their blindness. Wasn't expecting that. That's why it said one out of four. I wonder where the other three would be, though, because I've already been, like, everywhere. And pretty thorough, too. Feels pretty unlikely that I'll find every single other part, given how huge the world is. Let's get the address of this blind tasting restaurant for Calhoun Russell. 
for some reason, they seem to have a quest-related thing here about Aloysius Dawson. Why? I don't have to come to them for any quest as far as I know other than the restaurant thing. I've never seen that on a person that's not part of the main quest directly. Well, I'll ask him that after, for now, the restaurant. I have found a restaurant that could satisfy you, Mr. Russell. The most intriguing and exotic restaurant in London. Really? You have piqued my interest. Where is it? It's a place where you eat in complete darkness and try to identify your meal without anything but your palate. My, oh my, how interesting. It could even be fun to eat a little poisson et fruit that way. Oh, oh thank you, Dr. Reed. Please, have this for your research. 200 shillings. Nice. Do you know anything about a man called Aloysius Dawson? He used to be a big spender. One day, he sent three houseboys to buy all the beluka in my shop for his brother's birthday, if I remember correctly. I see. Anything else? Less gastronomic, perhaps? I really can't say. The man is filthy rich. But you know that, of course. Maybe I can just ask people in general around here about Aloysius Dawson. Yeah, it looks like I can. So yeah, let's report back about Emily. They're dead, the one killed by that vampire. Well, accidentally killed by that vampire. Uh, since Emily didn't take their blood very well. I have found out what happened to your friend, Emily. I can handle the truth. There's no need to hide the bloody details. Your friend was planning to become a vampire. She thought she'd met an honest one and made a deal with him. Unfortunately, Emily did not survive the process. My mother told me many times about the risks of being turned. I often suspected she exaggerated the danger to avoid me being tempted. No, the risk is real. Have you any idea what a body has to endure to become an organism entirely consumed by its need to process and recombine blood? I should never have talked to Emily about vampires. I never thought she'd actually try it without me. <sighs> Thank you, sir. Here, take this for your discretion. Whoa. Charlotte's steak. And it looks like it was max level. <laughs> Probably better than the pre win steak, I imagine. What do you know about Aloysius Dawson? That man is a tyrant. The embodiment of greed and selfishness. All I despise about this country. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? I really take some seriously. Remember, don't let any strangers come into your house. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Remember, don't let any strangers come into your house. <laughs> Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? <laughs> Remember, don't let any strangers come into your house. Oh, that's a beautiful moment. That is some very persistent knocking. Tell me what you have discovered about vampires, Clarence. They've always been here. And if you search for long enough, you realize others know about these devils too. I'm not alone. Have you shared your research with anybody else? No. But I've published my leaflets all across the city, hoping that someday someone will realize I'm printing the truth. What do you mean you're not alone? Who have you met? The Guard of Prewin. The Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole, Ichabod Throgmorton. Those names always pop up when you dig deep enough. Have you spoken with any of them? No. With the quarantine, it's almost impossible to leave the West End. But as a doctor, maybe you could, Johnny. Are you asking me to help you prove the existence of vampires, Clarence? Yes, Johnny. Please, gather all the information you can find about vampires and bring it to me. You're the only friend I have left. I need you. They are among us. Do I really want to prove the existence of vampires, though? It would make them less of a laughing stock, but also probably not good for my survival. Clarence, 
Why have you distributed leaflets about vampires all across the West End? I have to warn everybody about them. They've killed thousands of people already, unnoticed thanks to the epidemic. We are all in danger here. Vampires in London? Come on, Clarence. Who's going to believe that? I'm not mad, Jonathan. You have to believe me. I know they are real. They're all around us, even as we speak. Clarence, you've always been a reliable and a good friend to me. If you say you saw a vampire, then I believe you. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you for your trust. You don't know what that means to me. It's all right. But if you want my help, you have to explain exactly what happened. The first time, it was in Rouen. I saw an officer drink the blood of a soldier. I saw its teeth. I saw it bite. It was a vampire, Johnny, and, and they're here too. Do you realize you are ruining your family, Clarence? Don't you see the risk here? Money isn't important. Not important when it is a matter of life and death. That is what my dear Venus cannot understand. I can't believe I'm telling you this, but if warning people is that important to you, why not choose a more efficient way to spend your money? Don't you think I tried? I knocked at every door, went to every bank, I even tried to be published. No, Jonathan. This is a one-man war. Clarence, tell me about the vampire you saw in France. I was enjoying my leave in Rouen. I left the bar, took a shortcut back to the barracks. I saw it in a back alley, an officer in a stained uniform, biting into a soldier's neck. Did you ever see that officer again? No. He wore the uniform of the Royal Warwickshire Regiment. I did some research, but found no trace of him. He probably stole it from a previous victim. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Well, I've discovered he's quite versed in occult knowledge. So I wrote him a letter asking him to finance my research about vampires. He never responded. You know, someone we've never spoken with since we rescued them, I think, is Kimura Tadao. Person we rescued from the kidnapper. Oops. We meet again, Mr. Kimura. In a more peaceful situation. Dr. Reed. Still visiting London by night? We must both be nocturnal animals, you and I. After your captivity, I thought you'd be more cautious. Breathing the cold night air helps calm my mind, sir. I've had the most frightening nightmare since I escaped that filthy jail. May I ask you what you do for a living, Mr. Kimura? I am... I was... a landlord. A wealthy one. And... not a very kind one, I realized recently. Why this sudden epiphany? Is it because of your near-death experience? I was already feeling nostalgic about Weymouth, my hometown. With recent events, I'm thinking about going back there. How is the situation in the West End? I've heard rumors about armed men patrolling and fighting infected citizens in these very streets. I was lucky they didn't shoot me when I was abducted. What can you tell me about your abduction? If you really want to know, I was locked in that building for three or four days. My jailer was insane, mumbling about sacrifice and voices. What did he say about voices? He constantly whined about the voice of his master, ordering him to do terrible things. He wanted to silence the voice by offering blood. My blood. That must be, it must be related, right? That voice that they're talking about hearing and the the voice and figure in red that I've seen, that Jonathan's seen, and also the, uh, the person somewhere here in the West End that I should go speak with again, probably, who's just recently become a vampire and 
says that the voice in their head keeps telling them to eat rats and please help me. It's gotta be all connected, right? And why didn't he sacrifice you? That was the weirdest part. He claimed to spill blood was not enough. It had to be done when some stars were aligned. Which stars? That's the whole point. He wanted me to talk to him about some Red Queen configuration or constellation. I've never heard of such an astronomical term. Multiple times you've heard about this Red Queen. Why are you so nostalgic for your hometown, Tadao? I was focused so much on making money, I almost forgot that my relatives and friends are threatened by this epidemic. Have you no friends at all? Over the years, I'm afraid my greed turned me into my friend's adversary, while I became friends with my professional rivals. Those you grew up with didn't share your views on money and success. Would you believe I was once a member of poetry circles and an astronomy club? We were young, such joyful dreamers then, that I stopped laughing long ago. Have you heard anything from your family? I was not only a bad landlord, I was also a bad husband. I've not seen my wife and son for years. Busy, busy, busy. At least now you're ready to go back and see them. But don't be surprised if your son bears a grudge, sir. You make it sound like you suffered from an absent father yourself, Dr. Reed. Well, I'll keep your warning in mind. Oh, you don't know the half of it, Kimura. I'm currently on a hunt for my father's letters that they've placed around the city as a game to tell me the truth of why they left when I was just a kid and never came back. Can you change? And is it what you really want? If so, it must come from within, not without. I've seen what an altruistic gesture can do. Nothing forced you to save me, Dr. Reed, but you did. I will follow your example in these matters from now on. Follow my example then. Find a complete stranger and help him or her the best you can. Then invite him or her to do the same. You know what? That's not a bad plan, actually. And I should start with my family, for they are almost strangers to me now. Ken failed. Huh. I like that one pretty well. Tell me, Tadao. Why was your abductor so interested in your passion for astronomy? I don't know. We met a few times at the Royal Greenwich Observatory. He seemed to share my hobby. Then he invited me to his house and locked me in. Did he fake his interest in astronomy to get close to you? No. In his madness, he spoke about a blood sacrifice to be made to his master when the stars aligned to a specific configuration. Yes. Astronomy is a fascinating subject. When I was a child, my mother bought a small telescope for my sister and I. We spent many a pleasant evening stargazing. Stars are not just dots in the sky, Doctor. They are the key to our understanding of the cosmos. They remind us how insignificant we are. You're right. But children love magic and stories. I remember our mother told us constellations have the power to protect us. Protection by the light of the stars. That's sweet. You remember the name of these constellations? Pegasus. It was the constellation my mother liked the most. Memory's a strange thing. I can recite without hesitation the names of the 88 constellations, yet I barely remember my own childhood. Do you know anything about a man called Aloysius Dawson, by any chance? Well, I've never met the man personally, but I invested money in some of his companies when I came to London. A brilliant businessman. Goodbye, Mr. Kimura. Take care. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Remember, don't let any strangers come. So my perfect Prewin stake and Charlotte's stake are actually very, very similar. They have basically the same stats, except that 
Charlotte Steak ha takes 1.5 less stamina to use. Very small difference, but it's something. And aside from that, it does a lot less stun right now because I haven't upgraded it at all, but it also has a little bit different upgrades. And I think the base damage before upgrades is the same as the other steak. So the difference in the end, aside from the stamina, comes down to the difference in the upgrades. And this one only has two upgrades that allow you to add to the stun points. These other two ones have to be stamina consumption. So if you upgrade it twice with these stun points, it's going to do 41 stun. And right now, the perfect pre-win stake does 44. Which I think is because it allows you to upgrade the stun three times, accounting for the three extra points. So, I think I... Hmm. I think I prefer the perfect pre-win stake because I prefer stun over decreased stamina. But, it's just too cool not to use, right? I mean, it's Charlotte's stake. Right? It's the, the stake of the daughter of my, I guess apparently now my girlfriend. A light but solid stake carved from the strongest ironwood. The letters CA are engraved on its base. It's just way too cool not to use. So I'm just going to upgrade this thing all the way and use it. It is significantly less stamina consumption once you do that. 24 instead of 31.5. It's pretty big. And the stun is just, it's so close to my other stake. The difference will be pretty negligible. I probably have the stuff to upgrade my remarkable revolver as well. Yep, I have 14 good trigger parts. What can we get? Increase rate of fire by 20%. Or five stun points. Um, let's increase rate of fire. Five rivets. Damn, that's, that's a lot. Those are hard to get. I think that's it, right? I know there's still an upgrade that I'm waiting for, for the shotgun. That's the phosphorus, right? Yep. At some point, I got another one. I've got two, just need three more. Maybe by the end of the game, I'll get that and get to use the shotgun with the incendiary damage, maybe for one enemy before the end of the game at this rate. Look at how Jonathan's eyes have changed. I don't know exactly when this happened, but they've definitely changed since I last really looked at him. I think... The outsides are a bit more red, but also especially just the pupils are kind of cat-like. Alright, so last time I did a big spend on all my XP, like 10,000 plus XP, I think. I spent pretty much all of it, except for autophagy. I spent pretty much all of it on my body and blood, so this time I focused on my combat abilities. Got claws up to the next level, so from 345 damage to 480. And slightly more stun. Upgraded Shadow Mist, so we've gone from 400 to 550 damage, no other changes. I upgraded Autophagy to the last level, so an extra 100 healing, now 500 in total. I uh, didn't touch Coagulation or Blood Cauldron. Oh, I did upgrade one body thing. Not Big Thirst, uh, health, yes. Um, increase my health by 50. Let's see how the districts have done, especially the one where I ate somebody. Whoa! Whoa! What? What the fuck happened? No news from the East End docks. This catastrophe is no surprise. Since 2 a.m. today, the docks of the East End are officially segregated. The police report stated that a sudden escalation in violence had forced the authorities to isolate the area. Inhabitants were evacuated to temporary shelters. Since then, local authorities in Scotland Yard have been juggling their responsibilities in this event. Was it the fault of the gangs that bled out of the district unopposed, or the rumored madmen that killed the inhabitants uncaught? No, it wasn't. Those who say this came off as a surprise are liars, blind men with the judgment of children. It wasn't the gangs. They've been part of our city for so long that crime is part of day-to-day -day life here. It wasn't a serial murderer. Our physicians refuted the idea, identifying causes of death that range from old age and sickness to homicide. No, it wasn't a single specific culprit, despite your hopes. It was you. Me. Everyone. Everyone foresaw this fall. And now, cowards that we are, we pretend to be astonished when faced with the inevitable. It is we who did nothing, who should repent. My thoughts go to friends, my neighbors, and to strangers alike. May you find your loved ones safe and well. 
I wonder exactly what triggered that. Is it because I killed that one person that was part of the gang? Or was it because like a certain amount of people in the district had died? Or was it because it had been in the hostile range for so long? Maybe if it's there for like a certain amount of consecutive days, this ha something like this happens. It said that they evacuated people, but I mean, everybody's dead. They're not... No one here was evacuated. They're all dead. Or killed by me. Embraced. Shit. Well, I mean, there's no saving the district, right? Yeah, it's, it's impossible to save. It can never improve because I can't heal anybody or anything. There's nobody left. Wow. Okay, how we doing in other places, huh? 84%. Is something happening? Did we go from 84% to 84%? That's fine. That's stable. I'll take it. Nobody's sick. How are we doing here? 94%. 94%. Down to 81. Okay. Kind of expect something like that because I killed Joe Peterson. Seems like if you kill anybody, even if they're a terrible person who honestly would probably make the place worse, it seems like it always makes the health status go down. Which is kind of Weird, actually. And who is this person? Weirdo. But we're still stable. 81%. I should go back there, though, and definitely give people some medicine. Fatigue, 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 fatigue. A lot of fatigue. How are we doing here? 94%. To 95%. We went up by 1%. Alright. Carol Price needs... needs... needs what? It's got the icon there, but it doesn't say what they're sick with. Anyway, I need to find a way to talk with them. Still don't know how. Alright. Yeah, not... not bad. Except for the docks. That's actually terrible. But for the other three districts, we're good. Right, well, we got the good old thrower-upper that comes every... I was going to say morning, but given our sleep schedule, it comes every night. Let's test out our combat abilities on them. Woohoo! Nice! Oh, forgot you explode. What should I do with you? They're resistant to claws, sort of, but nonetheless... Oh. Whoops. I accidentally used my ultimate on them. I did, didn't mean to do that. I meant to freeze them in place. Test out my claws here. One hit, one kill. Granted, they were level 16, so that's not too surprising, but still. Oh, let's try it on you. You have more health. They took my blood! Test out the stake. Oh, that's so good. You okay over there, beast? <laughs> Interesting. Having a little pathfinding issue there, my friend. There you go. God, I'm so powerful. Just popped over to Whitechapel to give everybody medicine. I've done that. And I think I'll end this episode here, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to head over here and continue the main quest.